What do love, brotherhood, trust, knowledge, and happiness have in common? Well, they're all intangible, so you can't see them. You can't get your hands on them, and yet intangibles have become more valuable than tangibles to physical stuff. Take, for example, Google. If you look at Google's balance sheet and you take all of the, the hard assets, the servers and the computers, the pencils, the Googleplex, and then you subtract the short-term debt, what they owe banks just on a temporary basis, you find that Google's worth about $5 billion on paper. Now, investors are expecting that Google is going to just continue to grow and grow and grow and probably take over the earth because if you multiply what they're willing to pay for a share of stock by the number of shares that are out there, you find that they value Google at $135 billion. And the question is, of course, where did the $130 billion come from? And the answer is that it's intangible. Accounting started with Pacioli in Venice coming up with a system about 500 years ago that was handy for counting stuff coming off and on ships. And this has carried forward and been manipulated a bit. Uh, DuPont early on had a hand in developing the concept of return on investment. But all these things were accounting stuff Essentially, you could look back on and say, well, that's how much we paid, and this is you know, what we've burned up, and you, you come out with a firm number. Well, ha, 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 the trouble is some people are using that to sort of predict what will happen in the future, and <laughs> the past is no guarantee of the future. Decision makers could give a diddly damn about past returns if they're not going to be an indication of future results. People say, how can you measure intangibles? And let me give a few examples of how to do it, how not to do it. Say I'm in San Francisco and somebody says, how far is it to Los Angeles? Now, if I didn't know and I were treating it like intangibles, like some people treat intangibles that, you know, if you can't be sure, you just put in a little list on the side and don't count it, I'd probably say, well, you know, I just, you know, I, I can't tell you far. Or I might say, well, it's two hours by Lamborghini on I-5 or two days by the coast road uh, stopping in Big Sur. Well, hold it. It's not that not knowing that it's 424 miles means it's nothing. It means that it's about 400 miles. I make an estimate. And that, I suggest, is what we should be doing when we look at the worthiness of projects which involve training and other, quote, soft, unquote, areas. You can make an estimate. Managers make estimates all the time. It depends on what are the odds and what are the returns. And you add a few of these together and you end up with an expected value, which is a much better guess than no miles to L.A. There's an old saw that goes that you can't manage, which you can't measure. This is what we call bullcrap. Uh, managers... <laughs> have been managing stuff they can't measure for centuries. That's what the job is about, is, measure, is managing in times of uncertainty with incomplete information. When you recruit somebody, you don't have any measure to go by. When you make a big decision, there's too much going on for you to just ace it and say, oh, well, all the numbers work out. I mean, the numbers can be good support, but they're only a little bit of the, the overall argument. When a CEO is making a big decision, say for a $4 million LMS system, let's look inside his head and see what's going on. Now, he, he's busy during the day, so he, we catch him on a weekend, and there's a proposal for this LMS, and finance is looked at it, and 
people have read research and they figured this is the one for us. So they recommend let's spend the four million bucks. Well, the CEO has to weigh this against alternatives. I mean, can't do all the good stuff that would be available, simply don't have the resources. But So he's up at his fishing cabin, he's got these several proposals, and he starts to look at the one on LMS, and he says, boy, four million bucks, that's a lot of bread. Maybe we should be outsourcing this thing. I I don't know, but god damn, I could use a, a nice cold beer, you know? And I hope the fish are biting, and ah, uh, boy, did my wife put the, the uh, rubber, put rubber shoes that I need to go with my waders when I'm out there fly fishing for trout. Now, they say that the return on this is such and such, and they, uh, the guy who says that, he's got a pretty good track record, and sort of got to keep him happy. And, they're, they're, you know, it's sort of comparable and what it might be worth to some of the other long shots we're taking. And people get really angry at me if after a year of looking at this stuff I go, nope, nope, sorry, can't do it. And we probably lose a few of our senior folks should that happen. So, oh boy, it, it, it's, it's time to go down and have burgers with the boys. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll do this one. That's the way decisions are made. They're made with intuition. Informed intuition, but intuition nonetheless. So if you're on like the training business and you want to sell a proposal, get people to be true believers. Outline a picture of what is going to happen and the value that's associated with that. Don't nitpick over ROI numbers, which at most will account for like 10 or 15% of the results of the program. A lot of people say, well, Jay... My managers would never go for that. Well, <laughs> there, there are a lot of managers who aren't really living with 21st century rules. They go forward with goggles from the industrial age. And if you can't convince them otherwise, well, if things aren't going your way, I think you better leave because they're working with an, an obsolete default mental set and that's not going to be good for anybody. So, I'm much in favor of measurement, but measurement of intangibles is a judgment call. And I think executives need to be able to make good judgments, inform judgments, but they're not going to rely on the numbers to, to come up with it. That is beyond the pale. It has never happened. It will never happen again in the future. So, I'm signing off. That's enough for now. Um, Send me an, an email or uh, make a comment on my blog if you uh, agree or disagree with this. By the way, I'm not a, a total uh, Berkeley hippie here. I, I, I've sold stuff to most of the large banks in the country, and they don't pay attention to the numbers, trust me. Bye-bye. <laughs>